Hey there friends, welcome back to Chronically Overdressed. I'm Christine the Glambassador. If you love brooches as much as I do and you are looking for a really great way to display them or just make them a little bit more accessible for you to wear, then this is the video for you. Today I am going to show you step by step on how I make a brooch board. years ago my darling husband made this brooch board for me to store my brooches and also to be able to display them in my dressing room but since it's been several years I have definitely acquired a good many more brooches uh, and I realized that it's time to definitely make a new brooch board so during our last move, unfortunately, one of my Ikea mirrors that I really love uh, broke. The movers broke it and it's been sitting in my garage for a while. I didn't really want to get rid of it, um, but then I realized that I needed to make a new brooch board and I thought this would be the perfect frame for it. Making a brooch board is actually pretty pretty easy and can be done pretty inexpensively. Uh, you can find frames at any thrift store or you might even have some frames in your home that you're not using or you want to switch out anyway. And depending on the size of your collection, you can do multiple different frames or just one large frame if you want. The one thing I will say is make sure that you are getting a larger frame for what you already have because you know you're going to add more brooches anyway, um, or just know that you're going to make a few more brooch boards. <laughs> So the items that I'm using today are my broken frame, my broken mirror for the frame. I'm going to take out the mirror and I'm just going to replace it with a piece of cardboard. Then I just bought some poly foam and I'm going to attach the foam to the cardboard using some glue. And then I will cover that all with a beautiful stretch velvet that I got in a gorgeous teal color. All right, let's get working. It's a good idea to place a sheet or a towel down just to protect the surface that you're working on. I'm going to start by removing the mirror and luckily the plastic or the film on the back of the mirror didn't break when the mirror broke so it's actually going to come out intact which is going to help when I need to create a template for the size. So luckily I could just use the mirror for creating this template of the size that I need for the cardboard and also for the, um, the batting. Um, I don't like to do math, so this was really good. I didn't have to actually math it out. Um, but depending on your project, you may have to just figure out what the, uh, the inside measurements are going to be. And of course, the hardest part is cutting a circle out of this cardboard. These scissors were not the best, but I made it work. After a bit of trimming, I was finally able to make a template for the cardboard. And I'm actually going to use this to map out how big the batting needs to be as well. I just unfolded the batting uh, one time and I left it folded up. I think it's kind of folded up twice there. And this gives enough um, of a cushion for putting in the pins. You can still feel the pins kind of brushing up against the cardboard, um, but this amount of batting works great because I could still fit it perfectly into the frame without, um, without too much spilling out. Here I'm using the cardboard cutout to make another cutout of the batting. And this is just going to be a rough estimate. I'm going to trim it down a little bit more. It's kind of 
hard to see here, but I'm actually cutting inside that line and I'm cutting at a slight angle. Uh, you wanna make sure that your batting is kind of lesser on the sides, just to make sure that it's going to fit within that frame uh, without it being too bulky. Now we're just gonna put some of the glue stick on the cardboard, and this is just gonna help the batting to adhere to the cardboard and make it a little bit more secure when you're working. I also wanted to mention that I'm using cardboard here mostly because the frame that I have is actually quite light. It's just made of plastic, it doesn't weigh that much. And so I, I wanted to kind of match that weight with the cardboard. If you do have a heavier frame, you might want to use something like a particle board, um, but you still wanna make it sure that it's, it's something that you can staple through because you're going to staple your fabric onto it. Once the batting is adhered, you can go ahead and start trimming those edges. And you can see here a little bit better how I'm angling the scissors inward. And this just kind of gets the bulk of the batting off of the edges so it fits really nicely into the frame. We're just going to lay the fabric over the batting and I like to trim off some of the edges. Uh, no, these are not fabric scissors. Do not come at me. They are regular scissors, but as this is not a garment, it's okay. Um, so again, this is the stretch velvet. So I like to make sure that it's you know really nice and stretched over there. Uh, this step is not necessary, but I, I did find it to be helpful. I just kind of put a little bit of glue around the edges and then I just start stapling and I'm just using a regular office stapler. But if you're using a uh, particle board, you might want to use a more um, hefty stapler and then just trim off any extra edges. This is just gonna help to um, keep that back as clean as possible so when you do hang it up or lean it up against the wall, you don't have so much bulk. final step is to just put it into the frame. Uh, luckily this frame has just these little metal pieces that kind of uh, stick up and that you just press down to hold what, what was in there. Uh, depending on your frame, you may need to adjust this a little bit with your um, the backing, whether you're using cardboard or particle board, um, but you just wanna make sure that those are nice and secure and you're done. Well, now it is finished and I'm really in love with it. You can add a little bit more padding if you want. This size, uh, this is enough for me. Uh, I find that it's enough for most brooches, but you can absolutely, if you want to fill it out a little bit more, you can add some more padding. Just be careful about adding too much around the sides, otherwise it really won't fit into the frame. And as far as the fabric, if you don't like velvet, you can use cotton. Play around with different fabrics. You just want to make sure that it's not too heavy where you can't easily poke through it and get them out again. I like the stretch velvet uh, because it's very easy to poke through and it also kind of self heals in a sense. So you don't see the holes when you're pulling them in and out. So that's why I like the, the velvet on that. But play around with them and see what, uh, what fabrics you like. All right, now it is time to fill this baby up with some brooches.
Yeah.